uh, next up, I would like to invite Dr. Binod Khaitan. Dr. Binod is a professor at Ames, uh, Delhi, and he has special interests in the fields of uh, vitiligo, bolus diseases, leprosy, and uh, dermatotherapeutics. And uh, Dr. Khaitan will be speaking on autoimmunity and vitiligo. Dr. Khaitan, please. Good, aft <coughs> Good afternoon. Uh, after a hectic uh, workshop, some of you who might have attended, now we are into the domain of theory. And uh, my work is half done, or maybe more than half done, by Dr. Manju. Because when you are talking about etiopathogenesis of vitiligo, the large chunk is autoimmunity. So uh, I have put my talk in two components. Apart from basic, all those mechanisms are in the book. But then what to do when you are dealing with patients with vitiligo? So we can, uh, you know, So we have to op find the opportunity to address these autoimmune issues. So uh, my question to the audience is, is vitiligo a singular disease? If you see all these photographs, all of us know it is not a singular disease. Segmental vitiligo is because of mosaicism, and non-segmental is because of various reasons, including autoimmunity. And obviously, the challenges will be different. Pathophysiology has already been discussed. So even if there is genetic predisposition, there is a stimulation of innate immunity, as it has been seen, <coughs> shown in uh, NLRP1. And this is the first protein which comes into inflammation. And vitiligo and psoriasis are two dermatologic conditions where this protein is in abundance. So <clears throat> the genes per se may be lying uh, without any purpose. But then when the inflammation happens, these are the mechanism which play a role. So my uh, uh, suggestion is that if somebody is genetically predisposed, gene therapy is not a straightforward thing you have to treat the outcome of that genetic predisposition. Now, between uh, innate immunity and uh, uh, acquired one, so the role of innate immunity is more with ROS. Uh, there are talks on ox uh, oxidants, antioxidants in, uh, in, in, in the symposium, so I will not go into detail. Uh, but there also some of the agents will play a role. It is not only antioxidants which play a role. Uh, the calcino, uh, the, the tacrolimus and other molecules also play a role in reducing that uh, stress. In innate immunity, as Dr. Manju has already said, unfolded protein response activates and melanocytes release HSP70. And in dendritic cell, then it recruits affected T cells. Now these are going to damage melanocytes and uh, further chemokines are uh, recruited. So it's a cascade, as already been uh, told. So we have to attack this cascade at various level. So the adaptive immunity is an outcome or a next step of innate immunity. So innate, innate immunity per se will not cause that much damage. But when it is it becomes part of adaptive immunity and T cell gets activated, then melanocytes are damaged. So uh, the melanocyte apoptosis and autoantibody against uh, TRP1 and MART1 will be generated, which lead to progression of the disease. So uh, when there is progression of the disease, you have to arrest that progression. And there many uh, molecules will play a role. So we have to uh, utilize these molecules topical and systemic corticosteroid, uh, tacrolimus, phototherapy, and other immunosuppressants like methotrexate, azathioprine. I'm not talking to, uh, going to talk about tofacetinib because of lack of time, and there are many talks on tofacetinib. So um, these are all. So coming to, uh, as a clinician, we, we may be knowing the autoimmunity playing a role, but how do we address this? What are the various aims to treat vitiligo? So we have to arrest the progression, then you have to augment the repigmentation, achieve good color match. Even if there is repigmentation which is not matched, it is not good. And of course the psychosocial difficulty. So among various uh, modalities, both topical and systemic, uh, for autoimmunity, the important molecule is corticosteroid. 
topical as well as systemic. Topical will address the lesion. Systemic may address the disease process in the patient. So uh, as you know that long back in 1993, we published about uh, 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 systemic corticosteroid in vitiligo. A topical corticosteroid is very important for smaller lesion and uh, limited lesion. And good thing is the color match is usually good. Tacrolimus, I will not go into detail. Systemic corticosteroid, they have an issue. The question some of the skeptical people ask whether they should be used. Now, what are the questions to consider? As we know, it is not a singular disease. They are not all similar patients. Focal vitiligo is different from uh, widespread generalized vitiligo, non-segmental vitiligo. And is progressive vitiligo without any urgency or immediacy? No. Because if the patient is diagnosed and if you are able to arrest, you have achieved a big thing because there are many patients who will ask, Ki, Dr. Saab, ye ruk jai usi, kam se kam rok to dijiye. This is a big challenge. I mean, I'm speaking in Hindi, uh, sorry for international audience, but then I'm uh, uh, maybe understandable. So th since there is not one pathogenesis, we have to use more than one modality. I'm very clear that vitiligo cannot be treated with one modality alone because it is not a singular disease and role of corticosteroid because of various mechanism, it has a role. Now, oral mini pulse therapy uh, has a role in two types of vitiligo. One is rapidly progressive vitiligo, and one is insidiously, slowly progressive vitiligo with extensive involvement, which makes about at least 25% of vitiligo po population. Forget about segmental vitiligo, for forget about limited vitiligo. And for uh, all of you know more oral mini pulse, I will not go into detail. So one. Uh, one important point I want to convey that we should not use this when there is focal vitiligo, segmental vitiligo, limited vitiligo, and universal vitiligo. The depigmentation is a choice. Somebody is going to speak about depig I think Dr. Munish Paul will speak about that. So if there are multiple lesions, new lesions, the multifocal lesions, then the role of o OMPs come. I so this is one group, rapid and slow with periods of rapid exacerbation, about 25%. I will not go into detail of this. Um, the side effects are minimal or reversible in many studies, in our study, and the color match is very good. So what happens? The process is arrested, the melanocyte damage is controlled, and the remaining melanocyte, they start helping uh, repigmentation. So we can also call it spontaneous repigmentation by the good neighbor, good Samaritan, the good melanocyte which are in the surrounding. And the match is good. The another study by Radakovich from Vienna, uh, they also used little higher dose and they found a similar re result. So what are the advantages? Uh, of the most important is arrest of progression and then there is spontaneous repigmentation. Color match is excellent. It is of course not expensive and it is convenient home treatment because uh, the less number to, uh, of visit to the hospital as in many other therapy. I'm not saying they are not required. As I have emphasized, you require multiple modalities. And of course, the rigor of phototherapy may not be required in all patients. It is required in many patients. So that is one. The, after corticosteroid use for a long time, we wanted a good molecule which can spare corticosteroid. So now we have done a study on azathioprine and azathioprine is a good molecule. I, I will just give you the nutshell that now what we do, we start with oral mini pulse therapy. After four to six months, we add azathioprine. Then we start tapering oral mini pulse therapy because azathioprine takes about three months to act and then we can maintain on azathioprine. Some people ask, why can't you start immediately? If you are starting two, two so-called strong drugs, you have to monitor more and the patient will be frightened. So once you are controlling the disease, the patient develops confidence in you. After two or three months when you are adding another drug, it is much more acceptable. That's why we start after about four months. So this is a study which we have already published. Uh, both work, but azathioprine takes longer. So I think I'm at end of my therapy. And this is one review article in a multiple it's a multi-specialty journal, autoimmunity review, where there are all specialties they publish, and we, I thought the vitiligo should also be emphasized. This is a recent review article, autoimmunity in vitiligo, and of course the azathioprine study. One important thing we, we published that 
narrow band also has a role in progressive vitiligo, but it is a smaller role. So you, narrow band may be helping in progressive vitiligo. It definitely does help in non-progressive vitiligo. And the, another thing which we emphasized recently, that when you are trying to arrest the progression, start urgently. Because if you don't start, already the spread is happening. So you are at least not getting the best result. So if the body surface area becomes less and less, the other treatment modalities will work better. I think uh, I'm at the end of this 10 minutes talk. I can discuss further if uh, during dinner time maybe. Thank you very much.